Hi, Epiphany. Happy Monday. I'm glad to see you. Uh, I hope you were with us on Sunday, praising God and worshiping, uh, listening to the Word and having a sense of uh, the glory that God's given us in the season of Easter. Let's get right into it. Gospel of John, chapter 7. We finished up chapter 6 last week. Uh, we're moving into our, a third of the way through the Gospel of John. Hopefully we're more than a third of the way through this corona outbreak here in this country. Uh, time will tell. Bible's here. Let's read it. Interesting passage. Super interesting pericope. Chapter 7, verse 1. After this... Now remember, Jesus had just uh, been... Um, uh, on the Sea of Galilee, he had been with 5,000 folks. Uh, they started questioning him about a lot of things. He started talking about how the body, the bread that he broke was his body and the blood, uh, the wine they drank was his blood, and they had to eat his body and drink his blood if they were going to have his presence and vitality in the world. Then they're like, uh-uh, no. And a lot of people left him. And Jesus turns to, to the to disciples and he says, are you going to leave me too? And Peter says, the end of chapter 6, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words of eternal life. So now, none of the crowds are following Jesus. Sort of hemmed down into a small little group and he starts to go around and teach in Galilee. So let's see, here we are. After this, Jesus went about in Galilee. He did not wish to go about in Judea because the Jews were looking for an opportunity to kill him. Now the Jewish festival of booths was near. So his brother said to him, Leave here and go to Judea, so that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. For no one who wants to be widely known acts in secret. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. So it's hold here now. So Jesus has lost all of his disciples. He, he has just the apostles and his brothers and his immediate family that are hanging out with him. It seems that his brothers want him to repossess those great crowds to, to represent their family power and the, the dynamism of the, of the house of Nazareth, right, of where they're from. And, and so he says, let's go to Judea. Let's recapture the crowds that have left us, right? If you really want to be known, you got to go down there. You got to show off what you can do. You got to let the world know. You got to bring the group back. And then it says in parentheses, verse five, for not even his brothers believed in him. Now, I don't quite know what that means, right? Because I, because I think they did believe in him. They saw what he had done, the wine, the healings, the bread, the fish. They understood his power in the world, but they couldn't see him. Believe is the word with the eyes of his, their souls, right? They saw him for the power in the world, right? What he can do here, not what he was drawn, percent to draw us into, which is holiness, glory, Right, an extraordinary relationship with God. So, this festival of booths is the uh, fall harvest festival, where you, you go out to the field and you build these little huts, and you stay in the huts, and you have parties, and you, you drink wine, and it's time of great celebration. So they're all going down to J Jerusalem uh, to celebrate the Feast of the Booths. Now, it says here that uh, the Jews, uh, the power power structure of the time, uh, this is verse 2, were looking to kill Jesus. Now, it was easier for them to get to him now that all of his thousands of followers had dissipated, so now they can get to him. So Jesus knows that he is less protected if he goes down to Judea right now because he doesn't have the thousands of throngs. And his brothers are saying, we got to get those throngs back. we got to get them back. So here's what Jesus says in verse 6. Jesus says to them, my time has not yet come. This is very important because remember, Jesus is being pursued and he knows that if he enters into relationship with the, the soldiers or the Jewish power structure, that then he's trapped because as God, he can't keep them from taking him. I mean, he can keep them from taking him, but then he denies them their freedom 
And right, that's a fundamental thing that God does not do. So he knows that if he encounters them, then he has to go with them or he has to take away their freedom. Not, he's not ready to go with them and he's not about to take away their freedom. So he says, my time has not yet come. And we know when he ultimately turns the corner and says, my time has come, we know he's going to die. Because we know the worst of humanity is going to put God on the cross. So here, he says, my time has not yet come, but your time is always here. Meaning to say, this is your world. This is the place where you know how to implement your power. He says, the world cannot hate you. The world loves you. It hates me because I testify against it. Right? That its works are evil. Now, we don't like that word evil, do we? But it really means to co-opt, to do things uh, that God does not hope that we do. That God does not create us to do. Go to the festival yourselves. Jesus says, I'm not going to the festival. My time has not yet come. And after saying this, he remains in Galilee. So, let's see what he's going to do. We'll read about that tomorrow. But until then, I miss you. I pray for you. I pray for our church. I pray for the big church. I pray for people who are ill. I pray for you. I love you. Peace upon your soul.